Hello, and welcome to this introductory video to FaxGen. In this video, we will learn how to download FaxGen's demo, how to run it for the first time, and we will create our first video animation. This will not be an in-depth look at all the features of the program. Instead, this video is intended to let you test FaxGen's demo version without having to buy a license so that you can see if it works on your computer and get a feel of the possibilities of the program. So let's get started. First, we'll download FaxGen's demo. Go to www.unige.ch forward slash CISA forward slash FaxGen and click on Download and Licensing. Then, click on Click Here to download the demo. Click the Next button. Here's our software license agreement. Please read it before checking the Accept box below. And click the Submit button to proceed to the actual download link. FaxGen comes as a simple zip file. You can click the Download button to save it on your computer. It will take a few seconds. Now that the file is on our computer, I'll cut it from its original download location and paste it on one of my hard drives. First, I'll create a FaxGen folder in which we'll put everything related to FaxGen on this machine. In the FaxGen folder, I'll create a program subfolder and paste the zip file we've just downloaded. Next, we'll extract the content of that zip file in the program folder. Here I'm using WinRAR, so I just right-click and select Extract Here. Now, in this folder, you'll find a README text file. Let's have a quick look at it. All right, so before running FaxGen for the first time, we'll need to install three different versions of the Microsoft Visual C++ redistributable. Let's do that in order. Go to the MSVC Redist folder and start with the 2012 subfolder. Double-click on VC Redist underscore x86.exe to run it. Depending on your machine, some or all of these redistributables may already be present. In that case, please choose the Repair option. You can see that this is the case on our computer. When a redistributable is installed for the first time on a computer, you can just click on Next, leaving all settings to their defaults. In our case, clicking on Repair leads to an error message, but fortunately we can safely ignore it. This error message simply occurs when this particular redistributable is already installed on our machine. So, go to the next one, 2013, and repeat the procedure. Here again, we'll click on Repair because the redistributable is already present on our computer. No error message this time. And finally, let's run the last one, in a 2015 subfolder. Here again, we get an error message that we can safely ignore because we know that the redistributable was already installed. Okay, so that was a bit tedious, but fortunately, this is something you only need to do once before using FaxGen on a new computer. Everything is ready, so we can now run FaxGen for the first time. Go back to FaxGen's root folder and double-click on the FaxGen's batch file. As you can see, it takes a few seconds to start up. This little splash screen is here to let you know that things are progressing. And here we are. This is the demo version of FaxGen. It's basically the same program as the full version, except for this watermark on top of our 3D view, 
and a limitation on the number of frames that can be exported when exporting an animation. As mentioned before, we won't cover all the features of the program in this video. Instead, we'll take the shortest path to creating a short video animation. So, here's your 3D face. You can move around it by pressing the left mouse button and dragging around. Whenever you want to go back to the default view, you can go to the View Parameters tab and click the Reset button. This is the default face that shows up when you launch the program. It's not very interesting, so let's open a new one. Go to File, Face, and Open. In FaxGen's Release folder, you'll find a Faces subfolder, which contains a few faces to get you started. I'll select the first female identity. As you can see, loading a face does take a few seconds. This is normal. Here it is. Now, this bald head looks a little bit weird, especially on a female face, so we're going to choose an appropriate haircut. Go to the Face tab and check the Display Hair box. As you can see, we've got a few haircuts to choose from. Let's try another one. Alright, each haircut has its own set of color variations, so let's choose one as well. Now this will do. Good! So we'll start creating our dynamic expression using this face. Let's begin with a quick look at the Action Units tab, which provides the lowest level of interaction that we can have with our face. We have one slider per action unit. Each slider can be adjusted from 0 to 100%, and on the face you can see the corresponding action unit morphing from no activation to full activation. This is a great way to create static expressions and sketch things out in a direct manner. What we would like to do today is create a dynamic expression. So we'll jump right ahead to the Dynamic Expressions tab. Here, each row corresponds to one of the sliders we have seen in the Action Units tab. This time, however, time runs horizontally, while the activation of the Action Unit is represented on the vertical axis. This allows us to draw individual activation curves for each action unit. In order to add a control point to a curve, press the middle mouse button. If you don't have a middle mouse button, you can hold control and press the left mouse button. When creating a control point, you can hold your mouse button down and drag it around the track. At any time, you can also left click and drag any control point to adjust its position. Here I'm creating a bump in the activation of Action Unit 4, the Brow Lowerer. At approximately half a second, it will be at full activation, and it will go back down to zero at one second. When dragging control points around, you can always see their position in numerical form at the bottom left of the window. Now, let's scroll down to another Action Unit. You can use your mouse wheel to navigate vertically between tracks. Let's create another bump for the unilateral version of Action Unit 14, the Dimpler. In order to make things interesting, we'll use a different timing from the one we used on Action Unit 4. Here, the bump will start at around half a second. Its peak will be at around three quarters of a second, and it will go back down at one second. Navigating through all these tracks when you're only using a few of them can become cumbersome. So at any time you can check the fold box above the tracks. This will simply hide all unused tracks. By left clicking and dragging the right green bar above the tracks, you can place the time cursor anywhere you want. This lets you scroll through your timeline and check what your expression looks like at any given time. Let's unfold our tracks and add some head movement to make our animation look a bit more natural. I'll scroll down to Action Unit 51 and add a small bump to make the head turn left. I'll add another bump to Action Unit 53 in order to make the head turn up at the same time. Let's see what it looks like. 
All right, so our unilateral dimpler, action unit 14, is on the left side of the face. When the head turns left, the dimpler gets slightly less visible to us. So instead of turning left, we'll make the head turn right, in order to expose that dimpler instead of hiding it away. Simply right-click on Action 51's track and select Cut Track. Now right-click on Action Unit 52's track and select Paste Track. That's it! Now the left side of the face is exposed by the head movement and our dimpler is clearly visible. Great! Although it's quite simple, this will do for our first animation. The next step is to export it as a video file. In order to do so, go to File, Dynamic Expression, and select Export. As it's the first time we're using FaxGen on this machine, you'll see a warning message pop up saying that FFmpeg cannot be found, and that the video file cannot be created. This is normal. We are asked if we want to proceed anyway, and we'll say no. FaxGen exports sequences of PNG images, and then uses FFmpeg to convert these images to video files. FFmpeg cannot be distributed with FaxGen directly, so we will have to go and download it manually. We will do a simple Google search for FFmpeg. This brings us to FFmpeg.org, where we can click the Download button. We then choose Windows Packages, and finally click the Windows Builds link. Here, we will go for the default download. We need the static version, and we have a 64-bit machine, so just click the Download Build button. As before, we will save the zip file on our computer, and again, I'm going to move it to a convenient location. Here, I am creating an FFmpeg folder besides my FaxGen folder. Paste the file here and unzip it. The file that interests us is ffmpeg.exe, which can be found in the bin subfolder. We need to tell FaxGen that ffmpeg is here. In order to do that, go back to FaxGen, unmaximize the window if needed, and go to Edit, Preferences. Now, you can simply drag and drop ffmpeg.exe from your Windows Explorer to the second field of the Preferences dialog. Click OK, and we're done! Again, this is something we only have to do once, before exporting our first video on a new computer. So let's try it again. Go back to File, Dynamic Expression, and select Export. FFmpeg was found, so no warning this time, and we are presented with the Export dialog. For this simple example, we will leave most parameters to their default values. We will use the current dynamic expression, the current face, and the current lighting setup. In the Output tab, however, we would like to make sure that the FPS field, which stands for frames per second, is set to 25. Also, the sub-FPS factor must be set to 1. The reason we are doing this is because the demo version of FaxGen only lets you export up to 25 frames per session. We are creating an animation that has a duration of 1 second. So, setting our FPS to 25 will match exactly the total number of frames that we will have at our disposal. Next, we will choose a location for our export. Here, I create an Export subfolder in our FaxGen folder. Finally, you can specify a prefix that is going to be added at the beginning of your file names. This becomes useful when you are dealing with lots of different exports in a project. Here, for the sake of example, I will set it to My Prefix. Alright, click the OK button. FaxGen notifies you that the wrinkles resolution is currently not set to its maximum value. For this simple demo, we will leave it as it is. Using the maximum settings would slightly improve the quality of our expression, but it would also significantly slow down the process. So, 
click the No button. And here we are. Our output folder automatically pops up, and we can see the individual images being created. Now that the export is finished, go back to FaxGen and minimize it. Let's inspect our output folder. Our 25 individual frames are here indeed, so let's have a look at a few of them. All right. Now, finally, and most importantly, we find our video file at the bottom. Let's play it! Here I am using VLC as a player, with loop mode enabled. And that's it! Our first video animation with FaxGen using the freely available demo version. We hope that you found this video useful, and that you'll have fun experimenting with FaxGen.